Okay, so uh, welcome to Barn Bridge, project call number zero. Um, hello, community. Want to say hi. Uh, we're going to do a quick intros for everybody. Uh, I'm Troy Murray. I'm one of the co-founders, but this is really the brainchild of Mr. Tyler Ward. So I'll let him take it away from here. Go ahead, Tyler. Hey, everybody. My name is uh, Tyler. Um, I think just in terms of doing community intros, uh, for anybody who's watching this that doesn't know me, I've been in crypto since late 2016, early 2017 range. Uh, I started working with Consensus. Um, we basically were branding uh, some of their projects that they were starting and taking them to market uh, back through the 2017 and 28 market. Um, I've worked through the ecosystem with everyone from uh, Earn, who was then acquired by Coinbase, uh, companies out in Asia and Asia Pacific quite a bit. Uh, so needless to say, I've been in the space for quite a while. And uh, as a result of that, I started thinking uh, quite deeply about derivatives. My career started in uh, fixed income trading uh, after the financial crisis, and I started to get a pretty strong understanding of how uh, these products were structured and then restructured and repackaged downstream. And when I started to understand the concept of programmable money and smart contracts that comes from Ethereum, I started to realize that you can do a lot of things with derivatives, both from the income stream and then the base product that uh, you really can't do in traditional financial markets. So I wrote the I would say thesis, not the white paper for Barnbridge over a year ago, probably going back to like March and April of 2019 was when I started thinking about this. And uh, obviously we needed the ecosystem to mature quite a bit in order for us to be able to actualize um, some of what we're building now. Uh, what I probably underestimated was how fast the ecosystem was gonna mature and how uh, powerful that I think this idea is going to become and outside of just like a general introduction I will just tell the community uh, like buckle up because being in this space as long as I have I haven't really seen uh, ideas take form as fast as they have been recently Barnbridge included and we're just really excited to be building and be working on uh, what we're doing right now cool um, and, uh, Milak, do you want to do an intro for you and then let the tech, uh, Q branch, as we're calling it, um, do their intros too? Q branch. Hey everyone. I'm Milak. Um, my background is in, uh, software engineering. I've been, uh, part of digital mob for five years. Before that, uh, I co-founded Consensus Romania. Um, we developed projects for Singularity TV. We helped launch Gnosis. We had Aletio develop, and uh, now we're working on uh, Barnbridge. So, yeah, as part of Digital Mob. Thank you. Very cool. Uh, Dragos, do you want to uh, do an intro? Yeah, sure. So, uh, hello, everyone. Really glad to be here. My name is Dragos, Dragos Vizescu. Uh, I've been it's in not, this space. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's not Bond. No, it's James Dragos. Bond. No, it's Dragos. <laughs> Dragos is good. That's how I do it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, I've been in the space for five years now. Uh, I'm a full stack developer. Well, my background is a full stack developer uh, with a passion for scalable user interfaces and user experiences, you know, highly challenging. That's sort of like what got me in this space. Uh, right now I'm doing product management most of my time. Uh, kind of like consider myself a technical product manager. That thing exists. Uh, I've been working with Miad in the last five years, which is sort of like obvious. Um, I've been with Consensus. There have been there I have been working on launching early projects such as Gnosis, Singularity TV, and got my my toes in everything that was moving. Letio as well and. Uh, also in consensus, I co-founded Trium, Dio, a blockchain supply chain track and trace solution uh, that basically brings highly available physical assets on blockchain uh, by providing them, you know, all the means of transparency, traceability, and tradability. Uh, right now, I'm doing product management, 
uh, more exactly supporting Bogdan uh, in the space of Barbridge and you know what other what what other else I can do basically. So that's me. Thank you, Troy. Thanks, um, and Daniel or Bogdan, which or Cassian. Sorry, I can't see you guys because my internet's dead. So uh, oh, please, you're the you're the MC. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Uh, well, I'll take given. So I'm Daniel Luca, uh, also known as Clean Unicorn. Um, my background is also in software engineering. Uh, I started in the blockchain space in uh, early 2017 as part of the Aletheia team. Um, after a while, I moved to consensus diligence where I did security audits, uh, security research, some open source tools, a little bit of public speaking. Uh, and now I'm just uh, um, leading the uh, Barnbridge development part. Just really, really short and sweet intro. Very nice. Um, Bogdan? Yep, I'm going to keep my intro short as well because I'm not nearly as interesting as Tyler or Milad. But uh, yeah, I'm, uh, at Barnbridge, I'm going to be Dragos' uh, sort of less technical um, uh, product management counterpart. And uh, my background is in data science, actually, and I've sp spent my uh, last couple of years working on software development, blockchain analysis, even content and sales for two projects in uh, Consensus, mainly Oletio and Codify. And um, yeah, I'm kind of a self-proclaimed nerd and I've used and worked with almost all of the DeFi protocols so far. So that's kind of what uh, qualifies me to be here. Very nice. And uh, Kassian? Hey, hey guys. Um... So I'm Cassian Lakatoshu. Uh, uh, my software, my background is in software engineering. Uh, I've been in the Ethereum space uh, for the last three and a half years, uh, where I've been working for um, Aletheo, developing uh, data pipelines, um, working with DeFi stuff, and so on. Um, recently, I'm also looking into Solidity developments and. Um, yeah, everything development, that's me. Yeah. Very cool. Yep, and just to round it all out, I again am Troy Murray. Uh, I've worked in the blockchain space since 2013. Um, I got into Ethereum early on. Uh, you probably, if you know me, you know me from the Singles DAO development. Um, and I am working over here at Barnbridge and very excited about what we're gonna do with the bond token. So uh, with that, um, I do want to do, uh, let Tyler take over and talk about how we are doing the DAO first approach. Um, it's something that we came up with. Uh, well, we didn't really come up with it, but Tyler, if you want to uh, take it away on that. Yeah, so actually this idea originally uh, stemmed off of just my own, like wanting to eat my own dog food and actually use this product. So. I wanted to be able to trade in and out of risk uh, as I trade DeFi because like I'm pretty active in the ecosystem and uh, also do a lot of yield farming. And there's like times that I essentially want to personally use a product like what Barnbridge is creating to manage my own risk again. So I emailed uh, Kane from Synthetics. I actually emailed a couple different uh, companies and I uh, told them that I'm busy, I've got a lot going on, um, and that I essentially wanted someone to steal this idea and take it uh, so that, again, like I could just use it myself. And Kane actually responded and said, obviously he's busy too, but uh, if somebody builds this, then um, he would uh, help to fund it, right? And so that's when I essentially said, well, I can't build this myself. I don't have the software expertise or acumen so I went to Malad, who built a lot of the products and backend infrastructures uh, that I've used uh, with consensus and after consensus. Uh, and I was uh, quite surprised with how like bullish and excited everybody was about the idea. Um, but it was around the time that we really started working on this was right after uh, it was it was in it was two things happened. YFI essentially came out with the full on fair launch uh, concept, um, which I was always extremely excited about when I saw what 
uh, Ethereum was doing and like the ways that they came out, like the ways that Bitcoin came out and the concept of what you could do within a, a DAO with YFI, not that like I was unfamiliar with DAOs with MakerDAO coming out so long ago, but just from a governance perspective and being able to distribute governance to have a project that is uh, community run was exciting to me. And my, uh, some of my ideas with Barnbridge and what I wanted to build and, and probably want to build long term on top of it, really, uh, when you think about like international distribution of uh, financial infrastructure, there's a lot of regulation in play that I'm not sure that the like bones of the infrastructure necessarily needs to be worried about. So like if you think about the internet, uh, like the base layer of the internet, like TCP IP, that really shouldn't have to follow all of the same rules because they run on fidelity uh, than they do because they're also streaming Netflix. So what I started to realize is that if you can create uh, a system that allows you to build the guts and infrastructure almost as a tool that is run by a distributed community around the world, then uh, it's up to the people that build things on top of that to uh, follow all of the rules and do it the right way, so very similar to the internet. So basically the way that I started thinking about it was that I didn't wanna be as altruistic as uh, Andre because I want people to essentially be incentivized long-term to work on Barnbridge. But the first thing that I said was I realized I'm not sure that I necessarily did it for an altruistic reason. I just realized that uh, I wasn't going to be able to get the software talent or uh, the degree of talent that I was going to need to pull off this project unless I decentralized governance internally at first. Uh, so we essentially allocated, uh, we, we split the governance or originally just between me, Troy, DMOB, um, and then we went and essentially raised a seed round and distributed governance to them. But our plan from the very beginning was we wanted to get this out distributed into the community uh, as fast as possible so that um, both so that we could build a community around it, but also uh, so that we could essentially get the feedback and all of the uh, I guess like echo loop that you see with YFI and some of those things. And that was where I was thinking originally about decentralizing the governance almost from the get go. But also when we were talking with Kane and the early phases of starting this project, I asked Kane, what was the one thing that he would do differently when he was starting synthetics. And he essentially explained to me that uh, they started as a company and then they started a DAO and they spent a lot of money on, in legal fees unpacking the DAO and moving into uh, a true like DAO ecosystem because you essentially have to go undo everything that you've already done. And when there's millions and millions and millions of dollars involved, it, it's very expensive and you can't like fuck something up or mess something up from a security perspective. So Kane basically just told us you should just go DAO first. And so that that fixed a couple buckets for me and some issues that I had in the way that we were gonna roll this out. It fixed the, we will have a more fair and distributed uh, launch because of it. We will be able to distribute the governance um, to a degree that allows us to have a community that is running what we're doing and uh, not us making every single decision on what happens on the platform. And it also long term because of uh, the types of things that we're dealing with uh, internationally from a regulatory perspective, it helps if uh, a lot of the governance is driven um, from a community perspective. So there's a lot of reasons that we decided to go down first. And I would say that as we've rolled it out, it's been interesting because some people have been super against the idea, like primarily VCs and like money people which honestly kind of made me like it more because uh, I have a little bit of fuck the man in me. And uh, <laughs> I hope more companies do. Well, I, I hope that we can be an example of how and why this would work so that more companies will do what we're doing in the same way that I saw what Andre did at YFI and wanted to mimic it in some way. 
right? They're not going to do it the exact way, but if we can inspire a new generation of decentralized companies to go Dow first, I think we're going to be able to really, uh, build really cool things as an industry. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I would just like to add one of the things I really like about it is that we're almost, we're, 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 completely transparent from the get-go from the start right so you can go in there you can see what's going on in the community nothing moves uh without it um i love the model i hope other people do copy it um i'd even love to see some like we use an aragon dow to start it off there's a couple things inside there that i think you can even set it up to make it work even better um but yeah, I mean, we're the guinea pigs with this idea. It's very progressive. Um, and I'm with Tyler. I like how some of the VCs don't like it because you get to filter out people who aren't truly decentralizes, decentralists and people who are more like, oh, I really like DeFi, but I just, I'm more trapped by it, right? So you get to see who people really are. Uh, it's also really, really kept us honest, even as a founding team. Like it, 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 the human nature, there's a lot of greed in human nature. And so, We've raised a million dollar seed round and kept the amount that we raised at, at a very like reasonable amount. And I think like, as I've seen a lot of companies in crypto become successful, I've watched them, like even the founders that started out with altruistic intentions. If, if you put, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars into something, people can only, I mean, people change, right? And so this method allows people to stick true to their guts and guns because some of what we originally set out to do, even for uh, like selfish reasons, there's been times that I've been like, damn, I really wish that we could like open up the seed round because we could have raised five X what we actually raised, but it's good that I can't. It's good that we're not doing it that way because we don't need that much money. So this, this concept as a whole, again, it will be an experiment, but I've noticed that even internally within us, it's kept us honest and it's because we know that we, have to uh, report everything to the community. So, I mean, I, w I would be excited if I see more projects doing this. Yeah, it, that's a really good point. It, it definitely keeps us honest. So anyway, um, um, we're gonna jump from intro uh, uh, and, oh, what was that? No, I just wanna add that it's been uh, crazy so far, Tyler. Like I remember vividly when you uh, talked with Kane and then the next day happened and then here we are five weeks afterwards, which is crazy. Just to the point, like how fast the space is moving. So, yeah, it's been uh, pretty cool so far. Anyway, yeah, go ahead, Trey. Been a wild ride. It's been a wild ride, and it's just getting started. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> let's jump into uh, and like the actual updates. So let's um, let's go into the tech development side. Um, the first part of the agenda, and I would be sharing my screen, but I'm sorry again. I'm on my computer or on my cell phone. Um, is the yield farming and the LP incentivization um, concept, which has come up a lot in the uh, Discord and the community. So uh, does one, someone from your side want to kind of describe what we're doing with yield farming? And um, yeah, thank you. And what's going on with the LP incentivization? Uh, Daniel, do you, do you want to go? Yeah, I was going to, uh, nominate you if you want, but whatever. Yeah, but please. <laughs> I'll fill in the gaps if you want. Uh, uh, so with the yield farming, we thought, uh, we, we were thinking of uh, like a fair way to um, distribute some of the tokens without selling the tokens to the people. So we're not going to get any, any money for this. Uh, people are just going to um, add USDC, SUSD, and DAI to uh, the yield farming pools, and they're gonna they're gonna be able to extract those yields whenever they want, and also uh, those um, those tokens. So nothing is uh, nothing is uh, entering our pocket in this case. Uh, but the idea is that we want to do this for 24 weeks, and um, this is split into. Uh, 24 weeks, one week long to 24 epochs. One epoch is one week long. And then if people uh, join the yield farming before the epoch starts, they're gonna get the rewards for that epoch. If they stay in longer, they're gonna get, they're gonna get more rewards. So that means that we wanna um, uh, distribute 8% of the initial token, token supply. 
that's uh, 800,000. The initial token supply is um, 10 million. So that means that for each epoch, we're going to distribute um, approximately 33,000 uh, tokens to the whole people, to all of the people who joined the, that pool. Um, they will get a pro rata. That means that whoever um, stakes the most die or USDC or SUSD, uh, they're gonna get more more of those tokens. But I, we think that's that's one of the fairest way to join, and they're just gonna pay with um, cost of opportunity. Um, I think that's uh, yeah. And can I just can I just add the reason why we're using USDC, SUSD, and Dai is because those are the first assets that will produce yield in the first product that we release at the MVP, which is the smart yield uh, bond. Um, and so we, we wanted to incentivize the people, uh, that will be using that product, uh, to get governance early. Um, and that's actually, uh, jumps into why there's an LP incentivization product that will be coming along also. Um, and Daniel, if you wanted to take that away too. Well, wait, I have one thing that I want to add just so we have full transparency to the community. Um, uh, is, is, uh, when we say we're not making any money, that means we're not doing an ICO, meaning we're not like selling these tokens into the market. But uh, is there, are we not taking some aspect of a small fee from the curve pool or whatever we end up deciding to use that would go to the foundation? And I'm not suggesting that we do. I just, am, I just don't want someone to call us out later if they see that there's a massive pool and we end up making, uh, you know, like a nominal fee for setting up the pool in the first place. I don't so, know if there's even a way that you can code that we- We're not setting up, we're not setting up the pool. Yeah, we're not setting that up. We can, that's, choose, that's, we can choose to sell uh, some of the tokens to the Uniswap pool if we choose to from the treasury, which has 10% of bond tokens. But that's, okay, right. that's if the DAO decides to do that, yeah. And also the, re the, the way the LP incentivization works is that you take the liquidity pool token and you stake it. So we're, we're, we're incentivizing other people to set up that pool. We're not setting that pool up. Okay. Yeah, and Wait. something that is not visible in, in this uh, specification is, is the incentivized Uniswap pool participation between the bond and Y curve uh, pair which gets a bonus uh, reward in the first 24 weeks. And then uh, for the next 100 weeks after that, we have a, a incentivization plan r running just for that uh, LP, LP token from Uniswap. Okay. Perfect. Bro, if you want to add any details on that, go ahead, please. Um. I don't have any specifications around that. I don't know, Daniel, did you want to add anything? I think it's good on my end. Cool. Um, yeah, so I guess the only thing I would add is that it's a, you, by doing, by, by staking the LP token, you get 2.5X uh, bond on that um, in the current specifications, which yeah. is exciting, right? I, it's really cool. And I think it, uh, it runs for, I think it was, is it 100 weeks or 200 so weeks or something like that? 2.5x in the first 24 weeks, uh, okay. which is uh, part of this 8% of the tokens. And after that, it's for 100 weeks. We don't know exactly the amount of tokens for that, but it's probably going to be 2 million. Okay. So, yeah. So that's pretty cool. So we're bootstrapping liquidity into the network so that the so people don't have to worry about um, bottoms dropping out. So it's, this is yeah. our idea. Um, okay, so I think another thing that's really important um, that hasn't been explored completely in the DeFi or even in the Web3 space 100% yet is uh, this idea of uh, the diamond standard. And Daniel was the person who really brought this to our attention. It's uh, EIP2535. Uh, Daniel, do you want to give a quick rundown on uh, the diamond uh, standard and how that all works? Yeah, I can quickly do that. So when I first um, realized that we want to do everything DAO first and everybody wants to do it like completely decentralized and you want DAO to have um, complete control over everything, I thought what better than just to have the D D diamond standard. 
Um, it's a lot better than having a contract that is, so one of the big problems with Ethereum is that you cannot upgrade the contracts. Once the source code is there, it's stuck. And one of the uh, options to um, have, um, to kind of do that is to have a proxy contract and have a, an owner that can upgrade the contract at any time. But what we wanted to do is have uh, the DAO and the DAO can upgrade itself if it chooses to. So that means that people can uh, create proposals, they get voted on and we add or remove functionality or we um, uh, create new, new pools or we change some parameters. And if in the future we kind of promise that some feature will not be part of the DAO or we want to stop that forever, the DAO can remove that facet from the diamond standard. So that bytecode is never there. So it, it can never be called, even if there's a, a security issue or anything like that. So that's why um, when I understood the decentralization part, I thought that the diamond standard is, is the right way to go. Um, it is interesting. I mean, Troy said that we're doing new stuff and we are because Diamond Standard is not battle tested yet. Uh, a few projects are starting to use it. Um, it is super exciting that we're going to be um, one of the first to do that. Um, but we think it's uh, in a pretty good shape right now and uh, we, can, we can definitely use it to create like a really, really decentralized DAO. Yeah, I think one of the things about it that I find most fascinating is that you don't have to remove everyone and move them into a new contract where that's like a big problem. If you look at some of the other projects that are out there right now, even like, uh, like synthetics is going to have to go through that, uh, the Um uh, But I also, what I really love about it is that if you have new governance like uh, systems that you can actually just implement into the DAO, like where we were talking about the, uh, I think where you have like cold storage voting where we're not gonna have that at the beginning, but we can add it to it later. And that I find just, it's like a godsend, honestly, if, if you've ever done uh, any of this development, because you don't have to worry about like getting the whole community to shift over. It just happens inside of the system. And that's just like, mm, it's a great UX. Um, so with that, uh, I do wanna jump into um, the Barn Bridge um, improvement process. Um, so the BBIPs. And we already have two uh, BBIPs in the, uh, in the system right now. Um, if you can go, there you go. So let, well, let's go over BBIP one. And then I think we've covered BB, is BBIP one the? No, oh, it's a no, BBIP one. And the second okay. is the yield farming. And the third is the, I don't remember. Yeah. Oh, there's a third? Uh, okay. The, the third is um, the token. The phrase oh, there's a token. Okay, so do you, do you want to just give a quick rundown on one, two, and three, and then we can uh, we've kind of already covered a lot of this, but let's just we can just go through it for the community. Yeah, so just a, a, a quick rundown. Um, BBIP one is starts to define the DAO, how it will be uh, used, what users can do with it. It's still in I think in preview. Um, so it's, it's still a work in progress, but the idea is that everything is open. The, the repos are open. People, anybody can come and um, comment on it, say if they see any problems or anything like that. Um, so we're, st we're still kind of uh, discussing it right now. Uh, BBIP2 is the yield farming, which is uh, starting to have a, a pretty good um, shape. It's not in draft anymore. It's in preview right now. I think it will get into uh, accepted state soon, and we will set it to a frozen once we uh, once we deploy the the yield farming. And the third is the bond token, which um, is in accepted state, and it also it defines the the features of the token, like it should be burnable. It should not be possible, so nobody should have control over if you want to transfer the tokens or not. Uh, we have no control over it, basically. Yeah, so um, I would just like to state, uh, this obviously is the first project call, but in the future, um, if people are out there from the community adding to this stuff, um, we will be, uh, we're very open to bringing you on so that these conversations become uh, much more transparent and uh, uh, deeper. 
but um, if you draw, you can if you're interested, you can log into the GitHub and check out what's going on. Um, comment, give ideas. We're always very open. Uh, this is a community-run project. We are just driving it to um, birth right now. So with that, um, I do think we should uh, jump into marketing because marketing. Uh, has come up a lot in the Discord, and there's a lot of opinions out there how we should be marketing. <laughs> um, and Tyler, I know this is kind of your forte, so please uh, take it away. Yep, so some of the conversations around Discord, um, and I probably should just like cut this out early, is that I'm not sure how much uh, paid advertising we're gonna be doing uh, for this project. I do paid advertising for a lot, a lot, a lot of crypto projects. And I would probably say that I'm uh, one of like the most expert people in the industry when it comes to that. And Bar what BarnBridge is doing from a financial instrument component on top of crypto is essentially banned on almost every single platform. So whether it's uh, Google, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Twitter, um, I think that it's good that we jumpstart the community, but uh, unless something changes in the foreseeable future, I don't think that we're going to have a major reason to use uh, the, the main three digital marketing platforms uh, for crypto. Um, and then I would also say that uh, we allocated the tokens to the community, to the founders, to the seed team, we're not going to be giving uh, like influencer incentivization. Uh, so I just know that like I've been in telegram groups, I've been in discord groups and I know that we're going to get those uh, spam uh, like comments about influencers, about whatever. We're not doing that shit. So just like, no, now we're not going to do that. Uh, we have allocated some uh, capital from the Dow that we voted on for marketing expenses. One was to buy barnbridge.com, which uh, I originally had barnbridge.io. We have bond.finance, barn.finance. Um, barnbridge.com was like three grand. Uh, so fuck domain squatters, but like we need it long term. Uh, and then I've also done some aspects of like buying the banners on uh, ETH Trader, which like if we do paid marketing uh, in any capacity, it's primarily going to be like uh, things like that, that are a little, I, I would just say like gorilla. And I'm also going to be doing a lot of marketing um, myself, uh, just whether it's like out of pocket from like a design perspective I just, I want to make sure that a lot of the funds go to actual development of the protocol and not like all the shitty scammy stuff that people do. Like we're not gonna be like a mobile application that we're driving users towards. Uh, and some of the use cases that I would recommend that people do do paid marketing in this space. Uh, so let's just like keep it at that. And then the final thing that I was gonna say is that from a marketing perspective, I mean, from community updates, like you can look like already on Twitter, just organically, there's a lot of buzz around this project. We've got over a thousand uh, followers on Twitter and we've tweeted like maybe four times. So I think that uh, at least in the beginning, the organic growth is gonna be sufficient for us to build a community with. Um, the aspect of how much that we're yield farming and, and providing tokens to the community, we're assuming that the community will talk about this. So that will also help. Uh, and then the final thing that I was gonna say is that we haven't put a ton of uh, thought and conversation into how we're gonna handle community management and some of the things that do come with, uh, with just business development. Uh, and that's because we're focused on coding and software right now. We're having those conversations but we don't have anything solidified out there. So when I say that we're not gonna spend money on marketing, I more so mean like, we're not gonna like run Google ads for BarnBridge, but we will most likely have business development expenses that uh, we're gonna have to figure out as a group. And we don't have all those figured out right now. Yeah, um, and I think that's fair because we are literally starting. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah. 
with that, with, with that, I think we've covered a lot of the bases. Um, this was a really good first call, uh, project call. And um, I guess we can have like an open floor discussion right now if there's anything any, that anybody wanted to bring up. Um, if not, I can't actually see your faces, guys. So I'm sorry if you guys are like, giving me the thumbs up. Um, okay. So um, yeah, so if there's anything you guys want to talk about, uh, please bring it up now or forever hold your peace and we will log off and get this out to the community. I have one question. So we don't have like a email capture on the website or any way that we're capturing emails. Some of the other ways that we've distributed these community calls in the past. So uh, we can take this offline, but do, do we want to set something like that up or do we want to use Discord and Twitter as the main Discord, Twitter, and then we'll also put it on GitHub, right? Those will be the three main distribution mechanisms. I would yeah, you'll say, find. Go ahead. Uh, no, I just want to say if we do that, we also need to set up the whole uh, market email provider, right? And go for that whole thing. So I'd like to ask you, like, what's going to be the benefit of that? Especially because we already have GitHub, Discord, and Twitter. I don't know, that's I think at some point we may find the need for an email list, but uh, like I did a lot of work with consensus building out their email list because of like how much they do and how many updates they have. But like, I mean, Ethereum foundation doesn't have an email list. I maybe we'll start one one day right now. I think we're too busy to be like writing emails. Um, if you want to keep up with what we're doing, uh, follow us on Discord and follow us on Twitter. I don't want to start a Telegram. It's too and strange. check out, and check out the GitHub. Like there is a there's a repository that is specifically around the project management, um, and all the links will be found there. It is pretty much the Oracle for the project information. Um, Discord, you will find it too, but all the information will be there, 100% transparent, um, and that's that's going to be the go-to. So all the links will be there and you can see everything very easily. Um, that's my opinion. So uh, with that, is there anything else anybody wanted to talk about? Or are you all good? I mean, you can, I'm just hyped. You can give me the, yeah, I'm hyped too. Hyped. Thanks, Vaughn. Hyped. I mean, it's just like, you know, crazy. Can we just, can we just, can we just give a round of applause to Dragos for, <laughs> for his commitment to the Vaughn meme? I just love it. It's just so choice, sir. Yeah, um, this is this is every day, man. I don't know what you're saying, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, I also right. have I something think... else. Oh, okay. I also have to need like stand up and be in boxers. What's he gonna? What's he bringing out? Okay, uh, I cannot find it. I have a BP gun. I just realized that right now. <laughs> yeah, PP. <laughs> little PP7? No, BB gun? I think it's called, yeah. But yeah, yeah, my little PP7, no, no. exactly. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. Well, with that, I think that's the best way we can end this call. So community, we will be around. Check us out on Discord. And we look forward to talking to all of you very soon. Oh, really quick. This call happens every other Thursday. So it's not weekly. It's bi-weekly. Um, and with that, you no, know, I think we're going to sign oh, yeah. off. So talk. Uh, I tweeted about this, but if you start looking into the project and you look at the DAO, please do not send money to the contract. Like we will charge you. Uh, it costs us money to send it back to you. And we want to be honest, but like if you send 50 bucks, you're not going to get it back. Um, <laughs> please do not send money into the contract. Yeah. Um, that was one of the things I thought we could talk to Aragon about uh, as an improvement, um, as a way to set these things up. Anyway, um, cool. Anyway, uh, with that, I think we're good. We'll see you all very soon. We're on the Discord. And this is a great final. All right, everyone, peace out. Later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.